Joining me now is the National Security Advisor to President Biden, Jake Sullivan. Jake, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thanks for having me. Uh, let me start with this uh, warning that you guys gave to lawmakers that has now come out, uh, and that is the intensity of the Russian military buildup, what they have there. You heard Richard's report. Many Ukrainian leaders now see that this, is, uh, this appears to be an even bigger threat than they determined. What's your sense of how soon something could happen? Well, Chuck, we're in the window where something could happen. That is, a, a military escalation, an invasion of Ukraine could happen at any time. Um, we believe that the Russians have put in place the capabilities to mount a significant military operation into Ukraine. And we have been working hard to prepare a response. President Biden has rallied our allies. He's reinforced and reassured our partners on the eastern flank. He's provided material support to the Ukrainians. And he's offered the Russians a diplomatic path if that's what they choose instead. But either way, we are ready, our allies are ready, and we're trying to help the Ukrainian people get ready as well. Uh, the diplomatic path, what does that still look like? What are we willing to negotiate? Missile sites, things like that? What are we willing to, to talk with the Russians about? We are prepared to sit down with the Russians alongside our allies in NATO and other partners in Europe to talk about issues of mutual concern in European security. And yes, that includes the placement of certain range systems of missiles. It includes transparency around military exercises. It includes greater uh, capacity to have uh, confidence building and to avoid incidents uh, that could lead to escalation or miscalculation. We've laid all of that out in a paper that we sent to the Russians after coordinating it carefully with our allies. That paper is now out in the public view and the world yeah. can judge for itself just how serious we are. But what we're not prepared to negotiate are the fundamental principles of security that include an open door uh, to NATO uh, for countries who can meet the requirements. Jake, it seems to me that you guys have united NATO allies and European allies on a response if Putin does a full invasion. But the question I have is, if it's not that, but it is something else, uh, you know, trying to maybe annex, politically annex parts of Ukraine, things like this, how much more work do you have to do to get European allies ready to have a robust response? Well, Chuck, I'm glad you asked that question because uh, the, the Russian action could take many forms, including the possibility that they uh, annex the occupied territory, territories in eastern Ukraine known as the Donbass, or they could take a series of hybrid actions, including cyber attacks, political destabilization, things along those lines, or they could do a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And part of the reason that we've been working so intensively over the last few months is not just to prepare for one contingency, but to prepare for all contingencies and to work with our allies and partners on what a response would look like in each of those instances. We believe that we have strong alignment with our allies, yeah. that we are on the same page when it comes to severe economic consequences and the other forms of pressure that we would impose in response to any kind of Russian action uh, that amounts to aggression and escalation against Ukraine. How much more of a challenge is this? Europe, Europe has not found a way to have independence from Russian energy. Um, you could argue they should have spent more time over the last 10 years doing that. In the case of Germany, in some ways, they seem to go closer to Russia. How much does that hinder a unified response that might actually have some teeth? We believe that the Europeans intend to step up and impose severe costs and consequences. But again, you've asked a great question because it is true uh, that Europe has distance to travel when it comes to weaning themselves off of, of Russian gas and diversifying their energy supplies. President Biden has directed his team to look to find from other places in the world uh, LNG, liquefied natural gas cargoes, mm -hmm. that can be sent to Europe in the event of a contingency that, so that the United States' help to Europe isn't merely in the deployment of troops or the supply of economic aid, that we can help coordinate the delivery of gas uh, to keep Europeans warm through the rest of the winter. That work is well underway, and President Biden and Chancellor Schultz will discuss it further tomorrow when the chancellor is here in Washington. Uh, last week I had Senator Rob Portman, Republican uh, senator from Ohio on, who I know has been 
uh, basically been a been uh, in coordination in some ways on Ukraine policy with the administration. And he said to me, it's his understanding in private that Germany has given the United States assurance that if Putin invades Ukraine, the pipeline, the pipeline w is, is done, that they are willing to suspend the pipeline. But they won't say that publicly. Will the German chancellor say that publicly with the president tomorrow? I'll let the German chancellor speak for himself, but the Biden administration, at President Biden's direction, has been absolutely simply clear on this. Mm -hmm. If Russia invades Ukraine, one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. And Russia understands that. We are coordinated with our allies in What's Europe on that. What's the definition of invasion? That will be the reality if Russia chooses to move forward. Right. What's the definition of invasion there, though? Well, President Biden, President Biden has spoken to the fact that if a Russian tank or a Russian troop moves across the border, mm -hmm. that's an invasion. That is an invasion, and the result of that, from our perspective, would yeah. be the imposition of severe economic and if the, consequences. And if the Germans giving you that reassurance on Nord Stream 2, that anything that crosses the border is an invasion and therefore suspends that pipeline? I'm not going to get into our diplomatic discussions mm -hmm. with the Germans because I think it's important that we be able to coordinate with them. What I can tell you flatly and plainly one more time is one way or the other, if that happens, yeah. Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. i got to ask you about the Olympics here. We tried to organize uh, a diplomatic boycott. Nine other countries joined us, not even the entire G7. I, I, it is... We've talked about Germany. There's, we know why they're not perhaps on board here. France either. Uh, how disappointing is it that this is the West? These are the 10 countries that seem to prioritize human rights, while many other of our allies apparently prioritize economic ties more than human rights? Well, Chuck, I have to say that the premise of your question is not quite right. Uh, the United States did not go around the world knocking on every country's door trying to, quote unquote, organize a diplomatic boycott. What we did was come out and make a statement of principle about what we, the United States, mm -hmm. were going to do. We were not going to send an official delegation to these games because of the grave human rights abuses uh, of the Chinese government. And we did have some countries join us in that. Other countries made a different decision. But if you look at the broad level of alignment with our European partners, with the Quad, with our Asian allies, you can see like-minded democracies coming together on a range of challenges that China poses, whether it's in the realm of military aggression or in the realm of economic coercion or in the realm of human rights. And our statements at the G7, yeah. our work at NATO, our work through the Quad has all laid that out. And we stand a year into this administration stronger and more united with our allies when it comes to China than we have been at any point in recent memory. Would China be in line for any punishment if they help Russia get around sanctions? Well, the sanctions that we're going to impose will, in fact, have an impact on China because uh, they will go at the financial system of Russia, which, mm -hmm. of course, engages uh, the Chinese economy as well. And so China will have a choice whether or not it complies with the sanctions or uh, if it chooses not to comply, then, of course, there are penalties that accrue to that. Yeah. But fundamentally, from our perspective, we believe that Beijing will end up owning some of the costs yeah of a Russian invasion of Ukraine and that they should calculate that uh, as they consider their engagements with the Russian government over the next couple of weeks. Do you have any reason to believe that Xi told, uh, advised Putin not to do this? I don't have any direct evidence that he did one way or the other. I would note something interesting, though, in the more than 5,000 word statement that Russia and China released mm -hmm. when President Putin visited Beijing on Friday, the word Ukraine was not mentioned. Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor for President Biden. Appreciate you coming on, sharing the administration's perspective. Thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.